Hello, everybody, and welcome to FreeTradingVideos.com. It is March 5th, 2010, and this is your weekend edition market wrap-up for the week. And this is my attempt to mimic what D7 does a great job at. And uh, hopefully you'll get a different taste, look, and feel, but slightly the same as well. So starting off with the S&P 500, I do want to talk about what happened today on this daily bar. Just by looking intraday, we had a great run-up into several well-defined resistance areas, notably 113.50, the 113.70 mark, two very nice breakouts to a logical place of resistance at 114, which we talked about as well. Beautiful consolidation, even let some of the higher time frames catch up, which we'll talk about in a moment. And then a breakout of that up to uh, a high, and that was 114.34 before pulling back using resistance once broken support at 114 mark on higher time frame it just doesn't get any prettier than this intraday beautiful volume on the run-ups uh, just diminishing volume uh, up in here but uh, during the consolidation just fantastic to see that wane out uh, <laughs> this is very very nice trading pattern so good stuff finished the day uh, pretty strongly took apart a huge amount of economic data some of it not uh, what we were looking for either if we were going to be bullish and the market still did a great job of breaking out, leaving an unfilled gap all the way out on a daily chart. That unfilled gap uh, rears its head in a nice way and that is simply this. All right, so good to have that in our camp. Next logical place resistance on this chart to my eye is the round number 115. So good stuff. Comparing the S&P 500 ETF, the S&P itself Basically, almost exact same mark. And in this uh, scenario, though, that resistance level has also been tested out. And that resistance level is where these people started getting hurt. So I like to have that taken out. Great resistance here. The 50MA, good breakout. And we have the same unfilled gap past resistance on this chart as we do on the S&P ETF. Very good. The one thing we're missing is a good volume print here on this rally. So a lot of people into the close on Friday probably not willing to jump in even though we had some great technical setups up into this resistance area. So I'd like to see this again consolidate, chop around, work its way to the 115 mark and then break and uh, not the other way around. If we do pull back and sell off, I'll be looking for 113.50 as support now and then 112.50 as support as well. This perfect gap fill down here below that 112. So I'll be looking for a higher swing low after a significant move like this. And if I don't get that, then I'll be looking for a nice high base that I can use as an entry uh, either right below 115 or into 115, taking some pretty aggressive quick profits. So very nice. That's a daily chart of the S&P. Let's take a look at a weekly where we've been, where we have had a lot of price action is this swing high. We already know we are at that level and testing through that level of resistance right now. This is a multi-bar run-up even on a weekly chart with one down bar marching very nicely after a test of the 100 MA. It's even starting to roll back here a little bit. Momentum loss, but again a longer term consolidation. We did have a higher swing low. This pullback, this one, two, three, four week pullback, uh, nothing to sneeze at on higher volume uh, I would not have been surprised to see it consolidate on its low and fail further. Uh, right back to a logical spot of support on this chart, which is just above the 102 mark. Uh, so anyway, we didn't get that. We got a nice rally back up in resistance, and I'll be looking to see uh, over the next few weeks if we can hold up in this area. And if we break out early, back to this daily chart after consolidation for a few bars, uh, again, AKA maybe a week or more, then and only then would I be willing to jump long into this uh, broad market itself. We could always find relative strength stocks that are already holding up in this time frame and looking to break, uh, or relative weak stocks that are failing during this beautiful rally, and that would be a different story. But as far as the broad markets themselves goes, that is the story. So good to see this sort of rising wedge fail, but not fail to completion. It says a lot about the bullish sentiment, at least near term. If I look back in time, uh, the next spot of resistance on this chart, we already know 116.56. You've been talking that, about that for months. Uh, we ran to just shy of that, right? That swing high at 115. This, that's what this is again, right? So nice to have again that in our camp. Above that though, 120 seems significant. And wherever the 200 MA is, as it extrapolates itself down over time, 
Right? It's looking to get flatter and flatter here, but again, it's like moving a, a huge boat in the ocean. It takes a long time for those guys to turn around, where a smaller type of moving average can turn on a dime, a little speedboat, for instance. But I can see this guy losing its downward slope just due to this rally. So that's good stuff for the weekly chart. On a monthly chart, we do have the exact same picture as a weekly, albeit a little bit more data. And a nice run-up that we had, big sell-off with lower highs and lower lows, even breaking through the 50 MA through here. And of course, the large size sell-off. And now we're looking at a retracement level. If I draw that in, and we're right about the 50-yard line, but a little better than that as well. So I drop a line in there, smooth everything else out. And I know that I'm looking at this area right now near the 50-yard line and the 100 MA. So this little white stripe here uh, is perfect for that. So I like to, again, have that in our camp. Realize that we've had a beautiful retracement. So seeing the momentum shift here is not that unlikely. Right? And uh, hopefully that uh, we can get that to the upside if it continues to consolidate for a while, builds up a little momentum. Uh, proves that there's not a lot of sellers coming in, then only then would I want to uh, sort of go long with any kind of size in here. I'm going to be more prudent about how I go long and how aggressively I take profits, uh, even though the markets are doing a great job of digesting all that news. So good stuff. Let's do the same thing with the NASDAQ. NASDAQ has done the same exact price pattern, but it's X percent more bullish. In fact, we are now testing the swing highs of uh, the previous swing high is 100% retracement now of the last sell-off through here on a daily chart of the Qs. So I like that. I don't, again, care so much for the volume print. Not nearly as strong on the way up as they were on the way down. A lot of fear in there, but uh, we can take note of that. And on a weekly chart, you can also see uh, the symmetrical triangle, huge sell-off right through here, the apex of which we are now experiencing as resistance. And again, that makes a lot of sense to my eye as well, right through here. Don't even need to draw them, but just for fun, we can do that. Just drop it in. Nice series of swing lows. A lot of times the apex is resistance, and that's to the penny in this case. Not all that rare to see that. Um, anyway, we are, here, again, experiencing 100% retracement of the last sell-off here. And that's going to be the second test of this huge sell-off. But again, 100% retracement of that. Very nice. If we get a breakout after a nice consolidation through here, I'll be looking at 48.35. Then, of course, the round number of 50, which is also this swing high. And then 52 area, uh, maybe shy of that 51.60. So that's a great one for a weekly chart. And if I go to a monthly, which is always kind of fun, put 20 years on there. Uh, you can kind of see that it <laughs> you know, adjusted that same weekly chart all spread out looks very similar. All right, we've got all the same patterns, but now we can see where it came from, and I still have the same resistances overhead. It's not even meaningful to look back in time too much more than that. All right, and finally, the Dow, just for giggles, might as well add it to the pile. Looks almost exactly like uh, the S&P 500. So not much more to talk about there. It's not quite as powerful as the NASDAQ, which is sort of leading the charge at the moment. And uh, that's all I'll take note of. One of the best uh, broad market internals on a longer term time frame, since we're talking about daily, weekly, monthly, is the VIX. And we've been seeing that bleed out just wonderfully right to our support level, the swing low back through here. Um, and that is bullish by X percent. So unfilled gap here with the broad markets. Beautiful bleed out of volatility. Uh, is this now shifting to a lower uh, environment again, whereas before it was uh, very, very powerfully to the upside? A lot of fear in through here, but it's bled out beautifully. So between 20 and 30, nice range to watch for as over uh, so, uh, bought and oversold levels. But if we shift now to lower volatility overall for the broad market, uh, that would be probably concomitant with a run-up in the market. So we'll be watching the VIX very carefully to see if we bounce here, and if so, how high. That's confirmation or a way to disprove what I believe about the market and as I watch the action go by. So that's a bit of a longer video than normal, but I think it's important just to go through each of these broad markets especially, give you a great uh, shell by which to judge the stocks that you're now scanning for, and... Um, 
Good stuff. Great working with everybody this week. It's been a fantastic one, and I hope you have an even better weekend, and we'll be talking to you very soon.